Up next in the Marmy Rock Show, we're excited to have Brad Cox back with us. Now, Brad does a little bit of everything. He's a vocalist from We Love the Underground. He is an author. We're going to talk all about that. So, uh, Brad, welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks a lot, Rocky. So good to talk to you again, man. It's been a little while. Now, let's go ahead and... So, for we know we're talking about the new book, but for folks that may not know, let's talk a little bit. Give folks a flavor of what the first book was about so they can get a sense of, you know, the storyline. Yeah, so the, the first book was, I always sum it up like this, uh, it's basically these 12 uh, souls that are plucked from this place called the Hallway of Stars, which is kind of like an under, underworld purgatory type of place, and they're sent back to Earth to uh, create a new race of people, and there's kind of specific guidelines, it's kind of complicated in the beginning of the book, which lay out how they have to go about doing that. So um, it kind of follows their journey, and uh, at a certain age, they're all brought back together, and they're kind of elucidated into this this idea of what their real calling is. Now, would you characterize the genre as more like of a, a sci-fi or a, a fantasy or a comic book or like some combination of all the above? It's kind of a combination. It, the idea originally, um, I'd gotten a degree in journalism from Towson, and I had never really done anything with it. And I was, had, I was, I'm always writing blogs and, and lyrics and everything else. So at first, I just sat down, and the idea was, you know, write what you know, and write what you know is it's kind of started off as my life. Uh, but then I realized, well, my life is not really going to fill eighty thousand or ninety thousand words per se. So um, started kind of uh, just uh, getting real fictional and, and and deep into some of the subject matter, and the the story spawned. So it's, I, I tell people, like, when I'm at book signings that it's kind of a dystopian, but it's not really a dystopian. It's kind of sci-fi, but it's not, there's not, like, a lot of, uh, uh, I guess those sci-fi elements that are traditional, like, you know, uh, outer space and this kind of thing. Um, but it's, it's also got a lot of uh, religious themes tied into it. So it's just kind of a melting pot, really. So we talked a little bit about the first book, and it has a companion album, by the way, called Children of the Program, which was uh, the last time we had you on the show, we talked about that. So let's talk about the second book now. Is it a, is it a sequel and a continuation of the first one, or is it an entirely new story? No, it's definitely a sequel and a continuation of the first one. So uh, the first book was, you know, these people that are sent to kind of create a new race of people, and um, this book kind of follows the life of those people that were created. So, you know, I mentioned the first book had a companion album. Now, now tell us about the music that's going to come out along with the new book. Is it is it kind of like, uh, you know, Nikki Six did the Heroin Diaries and like each song was a chapter. Is that kind of the theory or is it somewhat different? It's a little bit different. I mean, the, the first one served almost literally uh, the Children of the Program uh, album that went with the books that We Love the Underground did. Um, it was almost literal. Like there was a you know chapter about like hell. And then the song, the first song kind of sounds like, like a, you know, a soundtrack piece more than an actual song. Um, and so in that case, uh, that album was a little bit more literal. This one, um, I'm pulling a lot of the, the lyrics and themes from the songs. Um, but I wouldn't say it's really, uh, like, uh, Nikki Six's Heroin Diaries, though there's certainly some inspiration there for sure. Now, which one came first? Did the music come first, or did the, the, the stories come first? Uh, in this case, the, uh, the uh, story came first. And then as, uh, as that kind of uh, developed, I started writing the songs to kind of go with that. So tell us a little bit about a couple of the songs. I got a sneak peek behind the curtain at uh, two in particular, Coma Soul and uh, Far Beyond Your Reach. So tell us a little bit about those two tunes. Yeah, so uh, Toma Soul is um, the the lead character, which is uh, it's kind of my character. So in the book, there's a character by the name of Nico Bao, which is uh, Nico being Nikki, and then uh, Bao being uh, the Egyptian god of thunder. So Nikki Thunders, which was another one of my musical projects. And um, this guy is kind of like he's uh, experiencing what it's like to. Uh, I guess, experience fame for the first time. Um, so it's like, in the book, it's kind of hard to describe, but the, uh, he's living out what, what happened after he wrote the first book. 
So, um, in that particular song, it's kind of, um, he's in Vegas, and he kind of wants to end it all, but he knows he really can't, and he hears and ends up in a, you know, a tub, and back in this kind of dream sequence. So that, that's kind of a soul. So, so, and tell us a little bit about the other team we're going to share with folks tonight, Far Beyond Your Reach. Far Beyond Your Reach is one of the heavier tunes, and that would be just kind of a, a separation from a higher power, kind of like not really fulfilling um, what you were supposed to be here doing in the first place, kind of doing your own thing and distancing yourself from uh, your, your calling or your purpose. And it was kind of laid out in the first book. So you mentioned it was one of the heavier tunes, and one of the things I picked out, getting that little, like I said, sneak peek behind the curtain, uh, first off, hats off to Tony Corelli, who you worked with. I, I love all of Tony's work. But um, did, did the music change somewhat stylistically a little bit from the first one to this new one? A little bit, yeah, because the, the first one, um, it's, well, We Love the Underground started as a solo project, then it became a band. So the Children of the Program album that the band did, you know, had a lot more... Uh, influences from the other guys and this EP is just kind of going back to being a solo project so it's more of you know if I had uh, complete control of everything what it would sound like I guess uh, so that's why it, it sounds a little bit different um, but I don't think it sounds so far off from We Love the Underground that people would be like what in the hell is this you know <laughs> yeah I didn't pick up much difference just a little subtlety almost a uh... Uh, a slightly heavier vibe was what I picked up just from the, the snippets I heard on that one. So, Yeah, yeah. So, um, hey, Tony Corelli actually appears on this one. Has he done uh, all your production for your guys' releases so far? Um, well, not, not entirely. I mean, I guess the, the, the Schizo record started um, with a guy named Dave Page, and he did, I guess, the first five Schizo CDs, and then we worked with John Grant, we worked with Drew Mazurik, and then at a point we worked with Tony and we kind of found a home with him. Um, but with the We Love the Underground tracks, it's been kind of a mix of John Grant and Tony Crelly. On this particular production, it was all Tony. Hey, so let's talk about live music, man. I know you've got a couple of dates coming up, one of which we will be at. Um, so let's talk about uh, Mayfest and the thing you're doing with Imbued. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, it's uh, down at the Metro Gallery. So that one is the Imbued CD release party. Uh, it's got Stone Horses on the bill. Um, another band that uh, Brian brought on called Minchera, I believe it is called. Um, but Stone Horses, if you're not familiar, is uh, the Charm City Devils. Uh, I guess, I don't know if it's the new band, but it's it's an incarnation of the uh, Charm City Devils. So I'm, I'm excited to play with those guys. Um and of course, imbued. It's a, I guess it's a transcendent event uh, show, which is Kevin Hawk. Uh, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be sold out. I have no doubt of that. And uh, really looking forward to it. And then you mentioned Mayfest. I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Right? Yeah. So um, that one was booked by uh, Nick Meyer, Seven One Seven Entertainment. Oh, um, yeah. you, you know Nick? Oh yeah. In fact, I think we've seen you at one or two of Nick's shows up there. Okay, cool, yeah, so he's, uh, he's, when he puts together shows, he's got a knack for bringing in, um, all styles, so you're not, you're not going to go up there and see just a night of just straight up rock and roll, you're going to get, you might get some rap, you might get some, uh, just like serious hardcore metal, you'll get like a, a melting pot of everything, which is, is actually kind of cool because the fans and the people that came to see other, the other bands, they're kind of forced to take it in and experience it and, you know, things that maybe they would otherwise not choose to go out to. So I, I, I definitely dig that approach. <clears throat> now, when you guys do a live show, at any point, is there, um, are storylines from the books going to be incorporated into the show or not, or are you just going to do more of a traditional set at this point? Oh, it's going to be all traditional set. I mean, I was saying a little bit earlier, like I, I worked the lyrics and the themes into the actual book, so, I mean, you'll hear those, but um, the, the show's just, we, we, we keep a, the, the high-energy rock show, you know, that, that's the focus with the live show. Well, we've always enjoyed seeing you and always have a good time interviewing you and the band as well. So, uh, why don't you tell folks where the best place to get the, the book is and the CD, and, and also a side question is, can you buy them together? Yes. Um, the, I, I, 
I got a little tied up with a, a CD baby. Um, dude, basically, you know, once you, uh, you you present the product, it takes them a couple of days to approve it, and then they blast it out to, to iTunes and Amazon and Spotify and Google Play and all that. Um, but it was actually just approved this afternoon, so um, Monday, I guess, it might even be sooner, uh, you'll be able to find uh, children of the program, uh, Edge of the Fifth Sun, which is the new book, and uh, the EP on Amazon. I'm doing a book signing at Greetings and Readings on June 10th from 4 to 6 p.m. If you want to pick up the book there. And that's, that's um, in, are you doing that? Is that in Hunt Valley? Is that where that is? Hunt Valley, Maryland? Yeah, right there in Timonium, kind of in that area. And, so. uh, and uh, you said that, that they would be available also on Amazon as well, correct? Correct, yeah. So I'll have both books at the book signing. Um, the EP itself, um, we're just going to start with a digital release on this one because it's uh, it just it just makes the most sense really for me right now. Um, so uh, yeah, you can pick that up on iTunes probably Monday morning. Well, we'll look for that for sure, man. And uh, Brad, good friend of the show, uh, Brad, vocalist of We Love the Underground, author of Children of the Program, Edge of the Fifth Sun, and uh, that one's out right now. You can pick that up. So, uh, Brad, always a pleasure talking to you, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you at that imbued CD release show. Oh, that sounds great, brother. Uh, thanks for having me on.